Okay, so let's take a look at why this board may be dead. So if you look at the keyboard connector, you'll see that it's filled with some sort of cum-like substance. I'm gonna scrape that off using some tweezers. Make sure to wear gloves anytime you're touching a board that's filled with cum. Gross! Ew. 0, 0.00 amps. Well, boo. Are you surprised that Apple haven't tied the battery serial number to the SMC so that it doesn't charge replacement batteries for safety? That would actually be a pretty notorious idea. Tim Cook, get on that. It almost looks like a swirl over here. You see this? Look at that. Kind of looks like a little swirl. Looks like a little happy pattern. Isn't that a pretty board? That's a beautiful motherboard. What do you all think of this board? Is it happy? Is it sad? Jeez, some, I just saw something light up. Did you see that on the corner over here? Something just lit up. And it's not even plugged in. That's amazing. Okay, ISL can go. This shit got to go. Goodbye. 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 Why would somebody do this to you, little MacBook? You're not even the model that randomly kernel panics. You didn't deserve this. You deserve to be treated better than this little MacBook. All right, so now I can see most of the traces, so I can see what's corroded and what's not. So the first thing that I did was use a bunch of flux and heat to remove the components. Second thing I did was I used flux to add a bunch of leaded solder. Then I used some goot wick to help remove the leaded solder that I added to the lead-free solder, flatten the board out, and I Wicked harder than I would if this was an iPhone. I would never do that to an iPhone board because they're much more delicate. The reason I wicked really hard was so that I could see which pads were still there and just had rust on them versus which ones were absolutely gone off the board. And so I could see the traces. Once I scrape away some of the solder mask, I can see what survived and what didn't. And I know right where I should run jumpers accordingly. Let's just go ahead and do some basic soldering there. At soldering with the capital D and no L's. Now let's tin all this stuff around here. And I'm going to give the chip a tap, and it's going to center itself. But I'm not done yet because it's not flat on the board. And what I want from a QFN package is that it's flat on the board. So we're going to go over this just to get rid of a lot of the excess solder. See, because the thing is, if you have enough solder on the center pad and on the main pads, it's going to center itself. Once it's centered, then I can worry about it getting flat on the board. Because remember, if I push down, I'm going to decenter it. So now that it's centered and it's hard on the board and I can't move it around, I'm going to push down in a heat and you're going to see some solder probably pop out as I make the chip as flat on the board as can be. And there we go. It's a little flat on the board.
why don't you buy new capacitors and resistors of different values, then take them off, then take them and be dependent on donor boards? Because it's not the capacitor that itself that's valuable to me. It's knowing its placement. Let's see, okay, look at this. Look at how many components I'm replacing. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Can you imagine how long this would take if I had to sit here and go th do this? Okay, I need this one component. Okay, I think this is the one that I need. Okay. Okay, let me just get this out of here, out of the booklet. Now I'm going to just pick that one up out of the booklet and put it down. Now I'm going to return the booklet. Okay, now I'm done with the, the, the 603 capacitor. Now I need a 402 capacitor. Now I'm going to go through the booklet. Like, are you kidding? This would take forever. Now don't get me wrong. If it's a component that I need a lot of on a regular basis, I'll buy a spool of it. But really, I mean, if you're looking at an area of a board where like 20 or 30 different components are completely destroyed, you think I'm going to go through a booklet for every single one, turn to the page, <laughs> Not happening. This allows me to be able to do my job in a convenient and economical fashion. If you need me to go through a book to do this type of stuff, I'm doubling the price of the repair. Don't get it twisted. For something like an LED driver, absolutely. I need those on a regular basis. I'll t and I don't want to reball them or an ISL chip, sure, but all these little odds and ends, yeah. Oh, and I'm, you're not even including the time that it takes to actually look them up in that. So I have to look up the value of each one in the schematic and board view. Then look up that value in the book, then pick it out and rinse and repeat. No. 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 F that. Donor board. Now you just have to pick your donor boards appropriately. Don't be a douchebag now. You, you can't take graphics chips off of donor boards. It's like the difference between buying a used jacket and buying used underwear. You know what I'm saying? Like you can get a used jacket and it's not really that bad. But if you buy used underwear, that's going to be fucking disgusting. Because there's just a different standard of wear and tear to it since it's closer to your nads. Now, a used little capacitor like this, or something that was just taken off of a, a board that, you know, just didn't pass whatever at the factory, that's fine. Now, if you grab a GPU off of a donor board, that's just being a douchebag. Because those things, you know, from the moment you turn the damn computer on, they're dying. When you're in this business for a while, you'll know what stuff you can reuse and what stuff really needs to be new. I try to go for the boards that have not been used, you know, like the, the, there's factory rejects or whatever, you know, like a, a path inside the PCB is broken or the board has a bad CPU or whatever, so they just scrap it, that kind of thing. This way they don't have any history of liquid damage or anything like that. I let the customer choose. Some people will pay the extra for the time to only use new parts. This is not one of those things where you even ask the customer because you don't want to overwhelm the customer with choices. It's one thing if it was a battery. You know, if this was a battery, that's dirty. It's like underwear, you know, that's dirty selling them, here's a used battery. If it's a graphics chip, that's dirty telling them that's a used battery. If it's, a capac if it's like a 0402 ceramic capacitor on a donor board that has not actually seen usage, there's nothing wrong with that. And by, you know, you don't want to ask your customer, because that's, okay, I'm not going to say that because that would actually get me in trouble and get a picket line outside my store. How can I rephrase this? I'm glad I caught myself there, but I didn't say what I was going to say. But if you can't go to your customer and say, okay, with the logic board repair, would you like to pay extra money so that I don't have to look through a book when I'm getting you your ceramic capacitors? Like, they're going to look at you like, what the fuck are you talking about, man? Just selling people on the fact that you can even fix the board itself is, is, is enough of a, of a hassle. I mean, you, you don't want to overload people's brains with this shit. It's up to you to make those decisions, and you need to make, and it's up to you to have the knowledge of that stuff. A customer is not going to have any fucking idea when a, a used graphics chip matters more than a used ceramic capacitor. You're going to drive your customers nuts with that stuff. Now again, with a screen, okay, dirty to use a nasty, uh, used screen because it's going to have scratches and shit on it. A um, casing, that's nasty. Keyboard, exceptionally nasty because it's going to have other people's finger grease and shit on it. But like, we're talking about a 0201 ceramic capacitor. Even an electrolytic, that's dirty. Reusing electrolytic capacitors that have been used, that's kind of fucked up and dirty. But a ceramic capacitor? That's, you're, are you really asking customers that? Are you really walking up to them and saying, okay, I could take the ceramic capacitor for your board for your ISL6259 circuit off of a donor board, or I can get it from a book, but it's going to take longer if it goes to the, you, you call your average customer with that. They're going to tell you, what the fuck, especially in New York City where I live, they're going to just think, like, what the fuck are you talking about, man? Just fix my fucking computer. You know, it's like, 
That, that, that's what they're going to tell you. Just fix my fucking computer. What the hell are you calling me with this shit for? I got, I got a court case in an hour. I got a presentation to do in three hours. I got to get home to my kids. What the? You're bothering me with this shit? I gave this thing to you to fix. Fucking fix it already. So that, that, that's what they're going to say. That's what 99% of the New York City customers that you asked that are going to say. Or they're going to get super paranoid like, wait, are you using used parts on my stuff? Are, are, are you using used parts on my stuff? Oh, oh my God, I should take this thing back. They're using used parts of my stuff. Me just to say, when you, go, you know, when you go to fucking Apple and you pay $149 for them to refurbish your iPhone 6 Plus, you know what they're going to do? You know what they're going to do when you have those Touch IC defects in your iPhone 6 Plus? They're going to take a board out of a phone that got traded in because the phone was fucking bent, and then they're going to take that board out of that phone that probably has a Touch IC defect coming 20 days down the line, and they're going to put it in your phone. And when the 90-day warranty is up, they're going to say, fuck you. That's what they're doing. So if a $900 billion company can get away with that shit, then yeah, I'm going to take, capac- take a ceramic capacitor off of a donor board and use that so that I don't sit here until 1 in the morning to fix one fucking motherboard. Trust me, people that collect radios want that choice and usually want new parts. Okay, radio collection, maybe that's a different thing. But this, that's a different target demographic that you're going for. You have to know your demographic. That's another thing. Know your demographic, know who you're selling to, know what's important for your specific demographic. What's important to my demographic is very different than what's important to your demographic. What's important to my demographic is I fucked this thing up at five o'clock today. My boss paid for it. I need to have it back by 9 a.m. tomorrow because if my boss sees that I don't have it, they're going to know I fucked it up and I'm going to get fired. That is the, the metric that, that matters here, not did you use new capacitor versus a uh, new capacitor that never got power put through it from a donor board from, from China. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully that makes some sense. This is not the same as you're sending, if you're sending your Parasound amplifier or your Delta console to Jim Williams to modify it so that it has a higher slew rate, that's a different level of customer than somebody that you know, ejaculated onto their MacBook. And with that, we should get an, a bunch of thumbs down on the video from you use low quality things. See, I told you it doesn't fix things properly. Unprofessional. But with that, let's continue the repair. I'm going to plug in this beautiful MagSafe. We're going to turn this beautiful thing on. And as you can see, this is a fan. And that fan is spinning in spite of my used parts. So we can clean this board and then move on to the next one. All right, now, am I going to say that this is the prettiest looking board ever? Not really. However, it does work, and it did recover from what appeared to be a completely cum-filled disaster. This probe point over here is broken. However, that was just for me for measuring. That's just to allow whatever's over here to connect over here via the capacitor. This is broken, but that's again, this and this are not important. What's important are this one and this one. So this and that, those are just probe points for me to measure. Again, the pathway between here and here is fine. This is just for me to be able to measure whatever's over there with the multimeter if I want. But yeah, this is my little board. I'm going to happily call this a fix. I may or may not decide to add another capacitor over here. This would likely require digging and running a jumper wire. Running a jumper wire for the 16 volt line, I, or that's long, I may not want to do. And I also may not want to knife and dig into this board given how bad it was before. Sometimes when I'm unable to solder something new onto the board or when doing so may cause a complication, I'll choose not to. That's that, that's a board repair. That is how you fix a board that was covered in a cum-like substance and make it work again. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. I'm a black star.